Welcome. We're going to talk today about statistics and curve fitting in data graph. This is a big topic and really we could probably do multiple webinars on some of the topics that we're going to talk about today. I have a punch list that I've created of things that I want to get through and really the, the goal for this is to more than anything get you comfortable with what's available in data graph the statistics that are available, the type of curve fitting that we can do and what those options are. Um, but data graph is not the same as a statistical program. It's not meant to replace say R or SAS or other statistical programs, but there is a lot of stuff that data graph can do. Um, it certainly in my mind can replace spreadsheets and, and well beyond that. Um, so so we're, gonna, we're gonna give you this broad overview of, of the different methods that are in data graph, the ways that we calculate things. And, uh, and one of the things that we're going to do at the end is we're also going to be doing a quick demo of a, a package that we have for R, which is an R data graph package. So if there's, there are any R users out there, that's gonna be the last thing that we do. Um, and we, that in and of itself could probably deserve another webinar. That's something that's actually in our beta. We just, a few moments ago, uploaded a new version of data graph that has a few changes in it and in the beta and has, for example, the um, some updates to the R data graph package. But the first thing I want to show you before we actually get into the statistics that I'd like to show you today is I want to give you a very brief overview of something that's in the beta. I'm using the beta version right now. Um, anyone who, if you haven't used the beta before, if you're a licensed user of DataGraph, then the beta is available to you. Um, on the App Store, it's a little trickier. You do have to register your copy. Um, usually that works fine. If you have trouble with it, let us know. But what we just added into the beta is the ability to add groups into the graphs that you see within DataGraph. So very quickly in this copy, yeah, you see when I hover over a thumbnail, on the bottom right of that thumbnail, there's a new gear menu that you'll see for the graph. And if you click on that gear menu, you get an option for creating a graph group. When I click on that, this group appears um, containing the graph that I included in that, and I can drag other graphs into it. There's also a bar at the end that you can move in order to include graphs in that group. And if you click on the group in the top left, then it collapses all those graphs down. So the file that you're looking at right now are a series of tests that we've been doing on data graph compared to a standard data set that's out there for, for validating statistical software. And the the graphs that I'm including in here are all the ones that are for a particular type of test. So again, I can add more graphs and I can collapse this down. Um, I can also click on the group and I can add a, uh, a name to the group. So, so there'll be more in this, but I just wanted to let people know because this is something we've known people have asked for. Uh, we've put a lot of effort into this and, and this is the beta. So it is the, the first version we've released, but um, hopefully this, this is uh, useful for you. I know I found it sort of fun to use in the beta. So again, you open it up, you click it to close it, um, and you can nest them just like the other groups that are in data graph for data and commands. This uh, group of thumbnails can also be nested. So you can include groups within groups. Okay, so now you know what you're seeing when you see this group here on my screen. And this is something that hopefully you'll, you'll enjoy trying out in the beta. So um, the first thing that I want to do is I, I want to just start actually with, before I get into some of this more detail with the testing, I want to start with a brand new data graph file and just talk a little bit about some really basic functionality. Because one of the things obviously that data graph does very well is visualizing data sets. And in, the, in our data table, we can create a data set. So I'm just going to create a set of uh, random numbers. So there is a, there, there are two random number generators that we have in the program. One is an NRAND that will create a normal distribution and I can input my mean and I can input a, um, 
standard deviation. And when I hit enter, so that's NRAND with parentheses, I put the mean, I put the standard deviation. Now I'm, I'll have to specify the number of rows because anytime you put an equation in that doesn't use another column that has a set number of rows, you want to specify, well, how many numbers do you want to generate? So I could generate 100 numbers, for example. So I quickly have this. And you can create a lot more numbers. Your data graph is very good with large data sets. So um, 1,000, if you need more, if you need a million, you, you can do that. Um, and, and a couple of things to notice here. There's a seed value that are in these um, number generators that you can change. And so you can set the seed to be something predictable. Uh, so you know when you reopen this file, every time you will get the same set of random numbers. Uh, but if you wanna change the seed, you can also do that easily as well. So this is one uh, random number. This is our one column of random numbers. Again, a normal distribution. Let me do another column of numbers. And I'm just going to op hold the option key, drag that to create a random number. Now we'll just go between uh, one and five, for example. Um, so one is a uniform distribution and one is a normal distribution. If I brought this data into data graph and I wanted to uh, view this quickly and see what this data was, there is a functionality within the program to uh, click on a column and then we will hit the space bar in order to be able to see what that data looks like. We call this a quick graph um, and it's not necessarily overly fancy, but these are extremely handy. So you can see here some statistics around this, um, this distribution. And if I change my random seed, then you're going to see that distribution also change. So this is just a quick look at the data. Hist gives you the histogram and also gives you some summary statistics about the data. Again, I can do the same thing on my uniform set of data and I can uh, change my seed here and this is all interactive and, and we'll show you that data. So, so that's a, a quick way to get a look at a, a data set. And I do that all the time when I bring data in, just, just hit the data, click on the space bar, and you get a quick view of what the data looks like. Um, you can also, as long as I'm talking about this, we're not going to, we're going to talk more about relationships between variables more uh, as we go through the webinar. But if you highlight two columns of data and hit the space bar, what you actually will get is a preview of a regression of that data with the R-square value. These two variables have no relationship with each other, so that's reflected in the, the uh, quick graph that you see there. So now for a, um, some more permanent representations of this data, um, I guess just, just quickly, just to be clear, you can click this button here. If you click that and say open, it actually will open a new file with that data in it and it will show that graph. Um, this is something we have talked about having this actually create this graphic within the file you're working in. It doesn't do that yet. Um, I primarily use this again for previewing the graphs. I find it very handy or previewing the data. So the, so the command that we could do this more permanently though in, in this file would be the histogram command. So all I do is I click on my um, column and I click histogram and I get an immediate histogram of that data. I can easily overlay these histograms um, I imagine that we have people on the line who are at varying levels of familiarity with the program. So if you've never done something like this before, um, any of the commands can be combined in any way. So if I wanted to take this normal distribution that I've created, I don't have to recreate my command. I can take this and drag it and drop it onto another thumbnail. I can do the same thing with the one that I've created here, drag that command, drop it on this thumbnail. Now, since they are on top of each other, we would want to allow them to be transparent. So I can go into either of these commands, click on the color button and add some opacity to one of them. And I could do the same uh, for another one, change also the color and add in some opacity. So we can see these two distributions and how they lie on top of each other. Okay. Um, so. There are some other 
uh, commands that we have within Datagraph that are, allow you, again, to do this visual representation of data, visual representation of distributions. And to show you a little bit of this, I'm going to go into the online examples. And if you type in the box plot, we actually did this a little bit in the last webinar that we had as well, you can see that there are a number of different representations using box plots. I'm actually going to open up um, this one here, which shows violin plots, which is a variation of the, um, of the box plot command created with the same command, but you'll notice that the the icon in this particular file looks very different because I've changed this to a violin. If I go back to the um, box plot, then it changes to the box and the icon also changes. So, so the, the box plot itself has a lot of different ways that I can um, represent the data and I can represent it via, via distributions. I can, um, there are histograms you can actually do within the box plot that you can explore. There's a, there's a lot of options here for, again, visually looking at different, different distributions and seeing how things compare. Now, the, the other thing though that I want to talk about is I wanna talk about not just visually how you represent this data, but obviously how do you calculate some statistics. And we, um, Datagraph has a number of different ways to calculate um, descriptive statistics for our data or what we would refer to as um, univariate uh, um, statistics. So for example, if we just want to do a simple mean of our data, then there's a couple of different ways we could go about that. For a data set like I have here, where I just have two columns of data, if I wanted to calculate a mean from this, then I can do that using a variable. Um, I can uh, actually do this, there's a number of different shortcuts to, to doing this, but the type of variable that this actually is, is called a number from column variable. I can create it from my variable menu. I would pick the, the column. I can use the menu. You can also drag the selections here from the header. Um, but under in this number from column variable, there's actually a number of different types of uh, values that you can get that are within this menu. So I can do the max, min, the range, the count, the mean, the median, and I also have the standard deviation and the standard error of the mean. So these are all things that um, I can output in, in, my, uh, in my variable. Sorry, my, my phone just rang. I should really silence this so that does not, does not happen again. Usually I have it on silence. Okay. Um, uh, I do see a question on um, the a brief explanation of the histogram kernel options, and I'm not sure exactly what that question is uh, referring to. Maybe you can um, describe that a little bit more. Um, uh, but let's see, what do I, what do I want to do here next? Okay, so, so the calculations that we can do, we can do the the mean, for example, is what I was starting here. Uh, and okay, so setting the bin width on the histogram, I will, I'll talk about that in just a moment. So, uh, so this would be just, again, one way that I can calculate that. And now I've created a variable that gives the mean of my normal. Uh, so this could be something like mean n. If I want to do the same thing on my column uniform, I, again, I can click the object hold down the option key to make a copy, and I can just change what column is being used. And now I have um, two variables showing the mean of one and the mean of the other. Um, so that just gives me a variable that then I could use in other calculations, I could use in expressions. Um, and, and yet there are other ways to go about getting these values as variables. And uh, basically, what you what's important to realize is that a number of these commands also do calculations on them. So if you want to look at, for example, the histogram command, there's a number of uh, statistics that are shown within the command itself. And if I go to the gear menu of this command, there are there are ways to um, extract this information. So I can extract as a as a variable all of these different values. And so this is essentially a shortcut to creating the variable that I did. But I can also extract as a column 
the location or the value. This is giving me, again, the result of the histogram itself. You can also go to um, append histogram information as columns. This is a shortcut to outputting the location of each bin and the count within each of those bins. So if I go ahead and I'm going to just put a column divider here just to make this a little clearer what's what. So I have my data and then I also have my bin location and my count within that bin. Um, so if I, for example, wanted to change the bin size, then I can go ahead and change this. For example, now you see I have a bin size of one. Um, if I change that to 0.5, then also notice how the data in the data table is dynamically linked to the output of the histogram. So that's going to change as well. Um, and then I could go ahead and um, use that in another uh, equation or you know, in, in other commands to, to draw things. So one of the questions is, um, how do we calculate the mean of a select number of rows within a column? And there would be um, a couple of different ways to do this. Again, Datagraph has some flexibility and depending on what your data looks like and how you want to calculate things, um, how you would do that. But when you're selecting a subset of data, it really is going to um, require you to have some, uh, some way to, to filter on that subset of data. You can actually do that just based on the row itself. So for example, here I have this histogram that I've created with this data. If I wanted to only include a subset of the data that's in my normal distribution column, I could add a, a mask. I'm going to do this at the group level just so this can be seen a little bit better. And I could say only include where the row values are uh, greater than, let's say, uh, 100 or something like that. So now I have less data that's in this, and it's only going to be including um, values that are row number greater than 100. I could also use the data itself. So I could say where the value is greater than 3, um, Maybe I can make this actually something a little more meaningful. So there we go. So here, if the normal, the value in the column is greater than three, then I'm going to include it. And if I then um, extract the mean of this um, value, there we go, and as the average, then I see the mean just based on that um, subset of data. And I could even make this into a slider and I can could vary this. Let me just do it really quickly. And if I have this from three to 10, for example, um, and then this is my, what I'm going to filter on, just to show you how all these things can be interconnected, I could actually then dynamically change what data is being used to calculate this mean so this is my mean that I did here. And I could then even put this mean as a title, use a token value to, um, to show that mean within my graph. And then again, as I change now this filter, then the mean value is going to change. Okay, so one question that we have is, the quickest way to see a list of built-in functions. So one shortcut cut actually that I use is to, if you type something in as a function and you deliberately type it in incorrectly, then a list will pop up in the menu that shows you a list of built-in functions. That can be um, one way just to check and it's just an alphabetical list. But if you want to see something a little more robust, then uh, go to the help menu for the um, expression column. And that will bring you to the knowledge base. And actually just recently, we added these links in here. So if you go to this page on the knowledge base, there's a link for um, mathematical operators, 
column properties. I'm not really going to talk too much actually about column properties, but that is good to realize that this is another way to calculate values within an expression. You use the name of the variable, name of the column, dot, and then all of these um, properties will return within an expression the, um, the, the property that it's uh, referring to. And if I go back here, click on function reference, and then this has a, a list of all the functions that are within DataGraph. Since we've talked about this now for these individual columns of data, let's go to something that's a little bit more interesting. And actually this will talk more about categorical data and how we would do um, calculations from those. So what I wanna use for this is this data set. Well, that's the one that you have on the screen. This is called NASTY and this data set was set up as a, a test for people to be able to really um, validate statistical software. And part of this came out of a, an analysis of statistical software where people were looking at different programs that were being produced and they found that they weren't always producing good results. Um, and so this nasty data set is a way of really testing a program to see that the numerical accuracy of the program is is appropriate and is giving you what you think you should. And this is something that we take very seriously. Um, the, the, you know, data graph was designed by um, an applied mathematician and, and so numerical accuracy is something that we take very, ser very seriously. Uh, so this is a data set that can be used to test this. And what you see here actually is the, is the actual, oops, cancel that, didn't need to move the data, is the actual nasty data set that's out there. This is a, a data set that has uh, a, only nine uh, rows of data, but it has a particular, um, uh, every, every column has the same standard deviation. The mean is the, should be the fifth value in terms of the row. And there's a number of tests that we can do using this data to ensure the accuracy of data graph. And I don't really have time to go through all of the tests that are in here. But for example, if we just look at uh, one of the regressions that's done, this is using the fit command within data graph. And these are the sort of things that people had trouble with, um, that some of the programs that were tested were not able to plot this data correctly because of the scale associated with this data. So there's a number of tests and they include both um, the calculation of various uh, you know, various statistics as well as curve fitting and regression. And um, I think most of these are limited primary, primarily to linear regression, but this is something that at some point um, I'd like to share this file with people so that you can, you can go through these tests and, and see what we've done. And, and DataGraph does very well by these, you know, particularly in terms of numerical accuracy. Um, again, this is something that we, we take very seriously. Uh, I don't know if, if any of you have heard this before, but I know it, back in probably the 90s, I remember being told don't, you know, don't use Excel for your regressions. Um, and I think this, that part of that came out of the recognition that there were some, some issues with particularly edge cases that were not working well. So um, with that said, what I want to show you is the fact that a little bit about the structure of this data, because one of the things that we uh, do in data graph is again, we allow you to use categorical values to be able to uh, filter out and, um, and use the masks to be able to collect data that you want to use to do different calculations. So in this data in the format that I have it here now, I can do individual means of individual columns. But if I wanted to quickly get the mean and standard deviation for each one of these columns, that would be a little bit tedious. So, so what we tend to do is we do what's called, um, oh, actually, this is not the one that I wanted to show. We tend to do uh, what's called, um, what we call flattening of a data set. So this is a data set that it's relatively small, but it still is essentially a wide data set. We have uh, various columns with headings, and these are columns that, um, that we would want to use to actually be aggregating our data and our commands. So to flatten this, let me just demonstrate that I would take my, I could take this group and I usually often make a copy of the data just so I don't, don't change my original data. So I just dragged this data set 
I made a copy, and now I can take all of my um, columns that, again, are the, um, the data sets as I want to aggregate the group. And if you go under data and flatten columns, it's now taken the data and it's almost like a reverse pivot. That means that we now have a column that we can use to aggregate and mask our values. And in particular, we do this using the pivot command. Here is an, a result of pivoting this data where the pivot command is calculating the mean and standard deviation of each of these columns. Let me just show you really quickly how we would do that. I can, um, I'll just add a new, a new graph actually. And then if I take these two columns, my categorical column, my value column, and I click pivot, um, now you see a, a, a bar graph that pops up. By default, what the pivot command is doing is it's actually uh, it's summing the data. So what I wanna do here is actually do the mean and the standard deviation. Um, and now, although it, these numbers are on completely different scales, so you're only seeing one bar, I can see within the, the detail view of my pivot command, these values are, are, are there. You see the, the mean and then in parentheses is the standard deviation. I can put this on a log scale using my axis settings to be able to see now these bars a little bit better. Um, and I could extract this out into the data set, so data, data table. So if I say um, extract all my pivot columns, then I will see the mean and the standard deviation from each one of these columns. And again, data graph is returning back the um, appropriate uh, values for each of these. So basically pass the, pass the test. Um, and let's see, I think, I think now we've got our, our team members up and able to answer some of these questions. Um, so let me go ahead and, and uh, continue with the, the list that I have here. So, so uh, we've shown you how to create the means using just the variables for a particular column. We've shown you using the um, pivot command and, and other commands, histogram commands. Those can also be used to do calculations. The box plot also has a set of calculations that it will do. You can go under the gear menu for the box plot and see what those values are. Um, and let's see. So the other um, thing actually, I guess let me, let me actually walk you a little bit through uh, before I move on to the next thing, a little bit about these tests because I think this was, was sort of interesting and actually revealed a couple of things um, to us as well in terms of, uh, of, of the behavior of the program. And again, this is the data set that we're using. Um, the first test that they have you do is to just round the column that's called round to one digit. And, uh, and again, this is something Datagraph had no problem with this, but some programs that they, that they tested or have tested uh, have not, ha or have not been able to pass that test. Um, we did the basic statistics on each variable. That's the uh, test 2C. Um, a correlation matrix for all variables. That's something that Datagraph really uh, does not do that something we have thought about a little bit, but again, the other programs are, 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 can certainly fill that, fill that need for people who need it. What you can do, which is um, kind of cute, is because I can take, again, I could take two variables and hit the space bar to get a quick graph. Now I see the regression of, of these two variables that, um, that have the R square as shown for those. But if you take three numeric columns, again, these have to be numeric columns in order to make this work, and I hit the space bar, you get a quick graph of um, a, a, a matrix showing the correlation between each of these variables. Um, I can go up to, I believe, four, and, and these all should be straight lines. These should be you know, correlated to one another. Um, I, don't know that it will go to five. No, the quick graph doesn't, does not go to five. But I've had in the past, someone asked me actually to, and I'm not sure I posted this, create a template that had, had 10 different um, columns that were, all had regressions and uh, 
create a matrix of that. So, so that's something you could also do. Um, might be a little tedious to create initially, but once you have that, again, just be able, you'll be able to drop new data in and that would update for you. Um, okay, so we didn't compute the correlation matrix because again, we don't, we don't have that functionality in Datagraph. Um, tabulate X versus X actually, uh, again, we don't really make tables. Uh, none of the programs really did that. We've, we've talked about creating a table command. We haven't quite done that yet. Um, you'll notice in the online examples, there are some examples where I've created a table view within Datagraph. And I do that actually using a, a points command where I'm not drawing a point, but I only draw the label at the point location. So you, you can do things like that. Um, and then there were, um, there's regressions here, Datagraph passed those tests fine. What, what was interesting though, is this idea of missing data. So this is a test that was done. Um, let's see, this is test three. So let me show you the test. And basically this is understanding how the program behaves when you have a, a column that doesn't have data in it. And in particular, this test was with a, a column that had a decimal point. Um, and the test, sorry if this is hard to see, but there were two if statements, uh, because you can do logical statements within data graph, no problem. Um, so here's an if statement. And the question, the, the first one was, if this is equal to three, then it should return one, otherwise it should return two. And what the test is supposed to do is always return the value two, because the value in this column miss is not, is not a three, it's actually just a point. Now, Datagraph actually sees the point, and again, this is probably hard for you to see, maybe, maybe through the webinar, um, but, but, but what it does is it sees this as the fact that it's non-numerical um, and it just returns a red value. So it's the same thing as if I typed in, actually this is where it comes from, if I type in a word like the, uh, it's going this, because this is a number column, it's going to return a, you're gonna see a red entry in that row. What Datagraph does is it basically will mask those out of any calculations that are done. Um, that's the behavior that, that we have really intended. Um, but for something like this, then it, it does not work. You know, it doesn't return back a two. Now what does work though, is if you type in NAN, that is something that Datagraph does understand as something that um, functions in a numerical column and it has a particular meaning. meaning. So when I, for any of these, if I actually have a, a NAN value typed in, then that does return, um, it returns the two value for this and it returns the NAN for the, for the second one. Um, so anyway, that's maybe a little bit in the weeds for some people, but uh, for others, I know if you're, if you're you know, doing computation or you're taking data from other places, um, NANs are something that sometimes get output. And I think it is interesting to see, you know, how the program handles it versus, versus, uh, versus handling just what we interpret as a text string. Now, one thing to remember that I think is actually kind of a, a handy, handy thing to realize too is, let's say I have a number here, but it is um, followed by a letter like N. Um, this is something I've run into definitely before where you might have, uh, you know, here's three and here's N. So one thing you could do is do a find and replace to go ahead and remove all those values for Ns. But because we can set up variables, I could just say make a value for N and I could make N a, a one. And now these um, entries actually did work as numbers. Um, so that's, that's really a handy thing that I found for importing data, that if you have some text string that's combined with a number, um, actually the pay special that we talked about last week is one way to strip that out of a file or out of a column, but you also can just create a variable with that text. And then that's one way for it to be seen there. Um, okay, so let me, let me get back to what I have here. So, so let's talk a little bit more now about curve fitting. I have some examples here, but I want to just, again, just to, to make sure that uh, for those of you who might be new to the program, that this 
all make sense. I want to start with a really simple example. So if I have an X and a Y column, and let me just type in some numbers, and here's my Y, and I might want to plot this as points. So that would be a separate command where I could plot this data. I see those points. Oh, these are these are really perfectly correlated. Maybe we'll kind of change that a little bit here. Um, so they're not quite as well correlated, maybe not quite that far apart. Okay. So anyway, here is, here is my data. Um, here's the points. Let me add a fill into them to make sure that you can see them. And if I wanted to do a regression on this, then the, the command that I would use in DataGraph is called the fit command. And that is pretty clear up on the top. I can click on that fit command and I immediately have that populated with the same X and Y from my points command. Now, if you start from scratch with a graph that has nothing in it and I hit the fit command, it's going to say, it's going to be blank because it's, it's uh, paying attention to the fact that there's a points command already there. So instead of you having to re-select the menu items, it will populate that for you. Um, you also, there's also a shortcut within the points command that if you want to use it in a fit, then you can just click the gear menu and, and populate it in that way. Okay, so within my fit command, um, I have a number of different options and I'm going to actually click on this swap um, shortcut in order to allow you to hopefully see this a little bit better. So here we have our uh, fit command and you can see how there's a fit function option here. By default, this is going to use the linear uh, curve fitting option and there are all these other options that are available to you and if I scroll down some of them have a pop-up that shows you the equation that's being fit others of them don't um, but but there's a lot of different different options here that we'll, we'll demonstrate a little bit a couple of other things to realize about the fit function there's there's some th there's actually a lot of flexibility in how we do fits um, for example we can uh, change what we're, how, what data we're using to fit within our command. So I can say, I want to just fit everything uh, up until, this is gonna give me an X and a, and a, and a uh, sorry, an X range. So if I don't wanna go beyond an X of um, six, then I can type that into my fit range and that just removed this one point from my fit without me having to do anything to change my data. This is similar to a mask. In fact, the fit command also does have a masking option, um, but this, this is separate because you are setting you know, exactly what you want for the range. That's a handy, handy thing to have in here. You can also um, change what you want to display because sometimes you may want to show your line beyond the um, range that's being fit. If you want to do that, you can change the display of the line, again, without having to, to do any other fancy kind of calculations or output. Um, you can also add weights into your um, regressions. And we don't have a list of built-in weights, but if you wanted to do a user weighting function, you could go ahead and then um, have that weight be something that you calculate and you would use that then in your, in your regression. Um, or you can then choose that from, from the menu here, choose the column that includes your weight. Um, again, the mask, we can fill in um, beneath our regression if we wanted to do that. Again, for those of you maybe not as familiar, if you want the points on top, you would just move that, move that command down. Um, and uh, the other thing here that I wanted to show you though is the use of the residual option because this is really handy. So if you're, it, one of the things with doing linear regression is that you want to see that the data are normally distributed um, around, your, around your line, that the errors are normally distributed. This is, again, sort of a simple example, but if you kind of play with this, you'll, get, you'll be able to see there's a histogram here on the right-hand side, and then we have the, um, the individual data points. There's even a function for being able to remove outliers, and, and you can change what distance from the... Um, regression line, those outliers are, are removed. So for example, in this case, if I increase my, um, 
I'm not sure if I'll get to a point where this where this does it with this such a simple data set. Um, but anyway, you know it's there. It's something that you can play with. You can see the um, goodness of fit parameters here within the regression, and those are also all things that I can extract into a variable, or I can use them in other commands where I'm annotating my regression. If I go, for example, to my text box and I want to put in um, an R square value and show that from my regression, I can um, do this where I go ahead and use the menu just to the, to the right of the text box and I can select this as a token. I would hit enter and now on my graph, I can see um, the R square displayed, which again is completely dynamic. So if I change any of my data, I'm going to see the, the result of that change. Um, so very, very handy for the linear regression. The other thing with the linear regression actually that I wanted to show you, this is something that is uh, more recent in the program. It's maybe been there for a little while, but it is something that we added um, that wasn't there initially. And this is the ability to add both confidence and prediction intervals to the, uh, to the linear regression. So if you can see this, actually I can add in, I believe a fill that will also fill that in. And let me make this um, transparent. Okay, going a little fast here, but hopefully, <laughs> hopefully you can see what I'm doing. So this is sort of a nice looking graph, right? And so what I did was I added in uh, confidence intervals around my regression. You can also add prediction intervals showing me the, the range of the, the population of data that I'm using or how well have I characterized the actual regression line would be the confidence bounds. And I can change what these bounds are dynamically. If I wanted to, to show a 90% you know, confidence interval, I could, I could um, go ahead and type that in, or again, I can use the slider to go ahead um, and change what the confidence interval is for that. Okay, so I wanted to go ahead now and uh, I, uh, let me step back a little bit. So we've shown you sort of a simple example for linear regression and how that works, but there are all these other fit functions that are available. And in fact, if you go under the command menu, this is actually probably important for me to, to point out, then the commands that do statistics and curve fitting um, that do these calculations are grouped together under the command menu. And you can see that there is a fit command, but there's also a multivariable fit option um, that's under here. So both of those are, are things that you, can, that you can explore. What I wanted to do was to actually show you just a little bit um, another uh, set of data that we're using to, uh, or that we've used to help validate the methods that we have within DataGraph. This is actually a, um, a data set that's from uh, NIST. And let me just very quickly, this is something that you can get online. There's a number of standard data sets that they have. Um, that we, we've downloaded these data sets. For example, there's a number of data sets for linear regression, and they show you both a, a data set, a level of difficulty, um, and the type of model that's being used. And the file that I have here in front of me is basically using these data sets in order to do these calculations and do, do these regressions and to validate them versus the uh, certified values that are on that website. And again, this is a file that I have not posted this, but uh, our intention is to share all of these with you um, e either on our main website or, or through, through, our, through our help page uh, so that you can see these values. But in any case, this, what this shows you is here I have my X and my Y. I have a linear fit in this case. The certified values are here within this file, so you can compare those. And then I have the um, the fit function, and I've created these other um, text uh, boxes to show the output of the of the of the linear fit, and um, and this again, this, these data sets are meant to stress a program. They're not necessarily meant to be easy, and they show you, for example, here's a quadratic fit 
to do that fit within data graph again there's a built-in quadratic fit function the, the they have two other um, standard tests in in this data set that use a a uh, an intercept of zero so it's what we refer to as a scale fit function so again this is in the drop down menu this is just giving me the slope where the line is going through zero um, that does require slightly different calculations in terms of how the errors are calculated, how the R square is calculated. So data graph does that appropriately. Um, moving on here a little bit, this is one that's a, a little more complicated and um, is a polynomial fit. Data graph has the, the numerics for doing a polynomial that's this, for example, is a 10th degree polynomial. Um, have to be done very carefully. This is something data graph does very well. Okay, and then the one that you see here, um, hopefully, maybe I'll make this also a little bit bigger, maybe not quite that big. Let's bring this down a little. Okay, so this is, this is uh, different than the ones that we've been looking at. You don't see a line on this, and that's because here we're using this um, multivariable fit function. And again, I know not everyone would need this, but if this is something that you're, um, you're in need of, then this is a really handy way to, to do these types of fits. This is a fit that actually has um, multiple uh, values in the model. And so it's impossible to draw a, an XY graph that has all of these values on them. But the interface for the multivariable fit function allows you to go ahead and click on each one of these to be able to see how your model changes or, or what the relationship is between the predicted value and the um, data for that individual variable. And this makes it kind of interesting that if I wanted to go ahead and look at some of these variables where you can see for this one, for example, there's not a very strong relationship between the two, I could then uncheck this to remove it from the model entirely. And that will then update my R square value um, and the other values that are in my model. So you can, you can kind of play with the, um, the model and see the impact of the different, different variables within your model. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and again, this is something we'd like to share with you. There's some other fits here with polynomial regressions, um, but I wanted to just do a really quick example before we, I do a demo with the, um, with the R package. And let's see, this one is the nonlinear curve example. So this is, a, this is another thing that DataRef does that um, I think is really very helpful. I've used this actually in some of the research that I've done. And th this is a, a part of the fit function where you can do nonlinear curve fitting. So you can specify an arbitrary function to be able to do a curve fitting exercise. For example, this is a function to describe the behavior of fluids. This is uh, a version of the cross model where we have a viscosity that we want to predict and we have a particular shape to how viscosity changes for a particular um, fluid. These are for non-Newtonian fluids. For those of you who are, who are interested, or maybe I, I think we have some people who work in rheology, uh, or I know we have some people that work in rheology who, who use data graph and, and may even be on the, on the call today. Um, but here you can see the relationship between these two variables, viscosity and share rate, and we can see the function. And the way that I'm fitting this is by using the fit function, but I'm using it in this arbitrary mode. So let me just actually do this from scratch just quickly so you can see it. If I wanted to, again, fit this data, it would be the same fit function. Oops, I didn't mean to create it twice, twice. But I would change this to arbitrary as the function. There's a, a function form that is populated by default. I'm not going to retype this in. Um, I'll just copy and paste it from my command in this other one that I have created. So this function form, I just want you to pay attention right now that it shows A and B because these are the two variables that are in the equation. Data graph will pick up um, automatically when you have unknowns and it will try and optimize the values for them. So if I now paste in, hit enter, my 
uh, curve fitting equation that, that I am using, you can see how um, these values now are automatically populated and it's trying to optimize each one of them. This actually, to view this appropriately, we'd want to see this on a logarithmic scale. Um, and you can see there is my cross model fit of this data. I don't actually have uh, the points plotted yet, so I can go ahead and add that as well. So now you can see the points, you can see the curve. Um, when you're doing nonlinear curve fitting, you do have to be really careful about what your initial value is. Datagraph allows you to pick an initial value for all your unknowns, and, um, and you can even change those with a slider. The fact that I'm changing this value and my model is not changing at all, my curve isn't changing, is, is good because it shows that it's a pretty robust fit. But you can see some of these initial values, maybe that was sort of a you know, some of the initial values will get you too far away from the, the solution that, it's, that it, I'm hoping to converge to. Um, so it's giving garbage here. And so you do have to pay a little bit of attention to picking a good initial value. You can sort of play with that. Um, again, goodness of fit parameters are here. Um, one of the things that I often do in you doing an analysis like this, I have a couple of um, equations that I have set up and then I want to output that data. Um, DataRap doesn't have right now a way to really tabulate multiple regressions. So what I usually do is actually extract the values out into the variable. So I have, for example, the fitted value for K for each of these. And because these are in groups, I can then put these in a column where this would, for example, be A, K would be the name of the first one. This, uh, these groups in the variables by default, actually need to make this a, a number column, the groups by default will, um, will add the group name to the name of the variable. So I've just typed this into a number column and you can see that it's not red because it's understood as a variable. And I can change my number column to display the actual outputted value. So here I now am creating a, uh, you know, a small table of my output for A and B. And again, it takes a little time to set up, but once you have set something like this up, do, you know, depending on what your data is, depending on the type of work that you do, then if I change anything here, um, so I just changed my, oops, changed my output, and you can see that it's changing the, um, the values for A and B that are shown in this table. Now, one thing I did when I did this, I actually had, I was scrolled down on my rows. That's not a problem. I can just go ahead and click these rows, rows and hit delete. And I'm only gonna delete these visible rows to, to get my table of my output. Okay, so, um, uh, let's see, can Datagraph calculate the, standard error values with the nonlinear regression as it does for the linear regression? That is a, that's a really great question. So someone's asking about um, the, the, the standard error of the fitted parameters. And currently we do only output the standard error for the linear um, fit coefficients. Um, again, something that we have been talking about adding. Um, I've heard from a couple of people that this is something that's useful. If this is something you need, then definitely let us know because we, we do a lot of our development, again, based on user feedback and what people are asking for. Um, so, so definitely you know, let us know if those are some of the, some of the things that you feel are, are currently uh, would be useful for you within Datagraph. Okay, we have a few minutes and I really want to, again, demo the, the R package. Hopefully this has given you a sense of, uh, again, a broad overview of the statistics within Datagraph, how we would calculate things um, using both the equations as well as the, the commands we have and giving you a sense of the different curve fitting options that are available to you. Now from, from uh, the, the R package was something that was developed based on the fact that we know that Datagraph doesn't do every type of statistic. Um, actually, one of the things that I should point out that I, I almost missed is another thing that we did add, and I believe it's in the online example. So if you need to do t-tests, for example, this is the one statistical test that we do have within Datagraph. There's a couple of options, or sorry, a couple of examples 
in the um, in the files that you can go ahead and open up. And the t-test calculator is really, um, or I call it kind of a t-test calculator. You do this t-test from the um, menu that in the uh, variable menu. Um, so I'm not going to go into too much detail on this. I don't really have time, but but definitely check it out. Um, we've talked about, you know, could this have been in a command, but for the moment we felt that this was a good way to, to do the t-test. So you go to the other drop down menu and when you select t-test, um, you can see the tests that we have available. And then again, this is, this is a, uh, a file that's available to you to, to paste your data in and, and see how this works. So let me now go to the, um, the R functionality, because again, we don't intend for Datagraph to have every statistical test in it. And we know that people you know, use R for a lot of statistics, um, but the graphing options within R are not as rigorous as what you would have in Datagraph. So one of the things that we think people can do is use R as their computation environment when they have those statistics that are in R that we don't have, um, but then use Datagraph to be your plotting environment. So if you go into, into R, let me go ahead and see if I can open up my R um, window here. And I just want to show you really quickly, if you go under the R, you go under the, um, so I have R open now on my screen, go to the package installer and you would just search on Datagraph and the Datagraph package should come up you would want to install, click here to install dependencies and you can install that package. And once you do, um, then you'll be able to, to uh, add Datagraph uh, into your workflow. And the way that the package works is that you actually create files that are output from R and then you can bring those into Datagraph. So I'm gonna open up a file here and open one that I've already created. So I'm going to the other menu and down uh, towards the bottom here is an option called data file. I'm going to click that. And I, I've already created a couple of these and I'll show you quickly how I did this. But just so you can see, if I go to this um, file here, here's one test.dtable. I'm going to open this. And now this creates a file or this, this creates a link to that file. If anything changes in that file, then it's going to be automatically updated within Datagraph. Um, I feel like I had another one here that I also wanted to, to show you. So again, I would open this, um, add the D table. At some point, we'll, we'll add the ability just to drag, drag and drop these files in as well. That doesn't currently work, but it will. Um, so again, just a couple of minutes for those of you who are interested in R, if you can stick around for a moment and I'll, and I'll show you how I generate these. So, so these files in these D table um, or this data that's in these, these D table files are, um, are really pretty, pretty easy to, to output. Let me see. Oh, these are actually the same thing. So if I go into, um, for example, go to the gear menu and go to the help. The page that pops up from the knowledge base will show you a, a description of these DT file formats. There are actually two file formats that you can use from R. Um, one of the things that I think is really cool about this is that we've um, implemented a number of different data types that R has. If you have a date string in R, that will get appropriately imported into Datagraph as a date column without you having to do any kind of manipulation or, or specifying anything with the data. So the example here are just number columns. Um, but if you go scroll down a little bit to go beyond this description, oh, actually, this is not the page that I want to show you. That describes the file formats. To go to the R Datagraph package, this is also under um, external programs and data in our help system. If you go under here, Again, there's some description of these different files and how they work. Um, I'm just going to show you the simplest one. This is the uh, write a D table file with an individual data set that you're going to export. Um, we can do a lot more complicated things here. You can output series of tables. 
you can actually have your R scripts running and have data graph viewing the output as it's being calculated. So if you have something you're doing in R that's going to take you know, a long time to calculate, you can actually output the data in real time to data graph to be able to view it. So here we have our, uh, our simple example. I'm just going to copy this from my, um, from my data graph help page and I'm going to go into R. Oops. So here's just quickly from the R console. Actually, I guess I've, I've done this before. I was playing with this earlier. So I would just type, I can type this in. Um, this is using a standard data set within R that is a, um, uh, uh, again, it's, it's part of the R program in, in the data, this Ostres data set. Let me do a new one and I'll call this um, table new. And when I, output this, you'll see that when I go now to data graph, go to data file, I'll see this um, table new. This is the one that I just created. There's the data. Again, this is date data and it imports properly into data graph. I can highlight these dates and go ahead and plot the data that you see there. And what I want to show to you is how Again, in real time, I can change something in R and it will, uh, it will automatically update this in data graph. So um, you, can, you, can do, you can both work in data graph, but you also could, um, if you've never done this before, I could separate my graph window from data graph and just go to my R console and I'm going to so I have a lot of stuff on the screen now. I'm going to use um, these next commands where I'm going to actually, I'm going to change the data that's in this file within my R um, system. So I've, I've just changed one of the um, one of the one of the rows within this data set, and now I'm going to just write this again. And I don't know if you saw that, but very quickly, this is the data point that I changed within R. So it just automatically updated my, my data set and data graph without me doing anything within data graph. So again, I could just completely be working in R and then viewing the outputs in, in data graph. And you can and just include these write statements as part of your R scripts. There are more examples that you can uh, check out from this, this uh, page within our help system. We'll be adding um, others as well. These are just some simple examples to get you started, but we're really interested in getting the R package out in our next version of the program. So we'd love to have others kind of test it out and see if you have any feedback. Um, and with that, I'm going to go ahead and end the webinar. So thank you so much for attending. I hope that this was, uh, this was useful. Um, uh, I'm looking really quickly to see if there are any other uh, comments. There's some, some comments on a MATLAB connection to, to uh, like the connection are that could be kind of interesting. Um, again, we definitely, we, we love to hear people's suggestions and, and see what people are working on. So I hope that you have a good weekend and um, take care. We're going to next, next week, we're going to do the final webinar in this four week series and we're going to be talking about exporting both data and graphics and there's actually a lot of kind of interesting things to to show you with regard to that uh, because there are ways now in data graph where you can export uh, you can set up a file where you can export uh, unlimited numbers of graphs at a time it may not be what you want to do um, but there's there's some really interesting functionality with that and um, we I might try and also include some information on scripting with data graph, which I think there's a number of people that are interested in that. Uh, just do maybe a short demo on scripting. And beyond that, again, I hope you have a good weekend and thanks again for attending.